Glad to have you here this cold, snowy Thursday night. I hope everybody's safe and cuddled up at home. And what a better thing to do than be, to be watching this show. We're live from the SCC studios in White Bear Lake, also playing live out of SPNN in St. Paul. And it's replayed in a number of different areas. But I, I'm really glad you're here. And um, I think we just have a fascinating show. Uh, and the main topic of this show is going to be about the city of Grant and the city council meeting that was last Tuesday night uh, because in a lot of ways it was a fiasco, it was not run well, uh, it was just unbelievable and we're going to show you videos of that. But my, my main purpose of showing these videos is so that you understand how a meeting is to be run. So this is kind of showing you how not to run a meeting uh, the videos show that, but the, but my purpose is to educate you on how to run a meeting. And, and, and there's an important reason you need to know this, and you need to be aware of this, because otherwise you get ran over. We do have a system of laws. We do have a system of rules. We do have a system of procedures. The whole world, the whole creation is designed that way, and... Uh, all governments put in procedures and you need to know them at the base basic level in order to function minimally with your government with other people around you uh, and if you don't know these things you'll get walked over and uh, you can also lose your voice <laughs> actually, in, absolutely. In, the dem in the democratic process right. I, mean. I mean they will go over the top of you you will not be allowed to have input right and, and basically the, the, the procedure can be manipulated, and I think that's an example of what we'll see tonight. Yeah, it, well, exactly. And uh, my guest will be uh, Lauren Cedarstrom, uh, a brand-new city council member uh, for the city of Grant, and uh, it was a new experience for him. And we, we just got a whole lot of details to go <laughs> in there. <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's just amazing. But it doesn't matter. It's, it's if you're in an organization, if you're belonging to a church, um, if you 501c4, 501c3, if you want to communicate inside an organization or a group of people, you're going to need to know these things. Otherwise, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to walk out. You're going to walk away mad or angry or whatever, and say, "I haven't been heard." Well, there's a reason, and that's because you didn't follow procedure or you didn't know the procedure to follow. And then it's really up to the kindness and the generosity of who has authority and who's running the meeting who's and who's the running chair. the meeting. Right. And then the chair can take advantage. And he can push his agenda through and not giving opposition an opportunity to speak. Some things need to be discussed. They're put on the floor. Uh, and some things are like the consent agenda we'll talk about later yeah. uh, does not, you know. And, and sometimes they sweep things under the rug and push things through to kind of like bully their way through. Exactly. And, and take your democratic voice away from you. Exactly. And there's, this is an, in a classic example of that of control manipulation right and so and then what we'll be looking at here then is how do we go about and stop that from happening and there are steps to do at the time and there are steps in person may have to do later through a lawsuit or whatever which does it involve firearms, firearms. <laughs> well i tell you the founding fathers that involved firearms <laughs> i'm gonna put it that way that wasn't a problem for them because rights were just being trampled on big time. Okay, well, before we get to that, uh, just going to update a couple of things. Well, one of the things we're going to talk about is oath, oath of office, and that's a very important issue uh, in, in, in not only the city of the Grant, but the Minnesota Supreme Court has ruled on oath of offices that basically you don't have to do it. Even though it's in our Constitution, the U.S., Constitution, the state constitution, and in our statutes, the Minnesota Supreme Court has ignored that question. When it was brought to them properly, they ignored it. And so we're going to talk about oaths of office here in this situation. Um, 
Oh, also, hey, just, just safety-wise, kind of in a different direction here. Uh, you know, I was out in the road, probably drove around half the city today, you know, from uh, the uh, southwest corner of uh, 69, uh, 494 all the way over to uh, the northwest corner of uh, uh, 694. A lot of cars in accidents, and some cars just on the side of the road. And here's the question I have for you. I was curious, I did, didn't really get to see the kind of makes and models, but because traffic was backed up, and if you had an electric car, you know, this is, you're a car guy, uh, Mr. Cedarstrom. Uh, if you have an electric car and you're backed up in traffic, and instead of taking the, you know, your car can go 30 or 60 miles on a charge, but if you're backed up and could your battery run well, out? Well, your battery could run out, but the other problem in this very, very cold weather is a lot of people run low on gas, Tim, and that's uh -huh. bad because the new cars have fuel pumps in the gas tank. They're not a bolted right. to the side of the right. engine that, that, yeah. that are mechanical anymore. Yeah. And if you don't keep at least a half a tank of gas or more, and you don't add heat to get, a, get, get rid of the moisture, because... When, when you have a, an eighth of a tank of gas, air gets in there. If it's high humidity, it can condense, okay? And then you end up with a frozen gas line. And a lot of people don't pay enough attention to keeping enough gas in their cars. Okay. And, oh, I've got a, 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 an eighth of a tank, I can make it. Well, if you get stopped in traffic, you're not going to make it if, if you're sitting there because you're leaving your car run. Now, an electric car may be a little different because it's got a gasoline engine also, and it only uses the electricity when it's driving, mm -hmm. okay? Because they're not all, but hybrids, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. But I think a lot of people, especially in the cold weather, don't pay attention. They run their cars low on fuel. They never add a de-icer yeah. to the, to the uh, eth methyl methyl alcohol or whatever it but is. But there are cars out there that are all, all electric. That's all they are. And uh, um, Tesla is one. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of really, really good, inexpensive electric cars out there that I've, I've been in that I've liked, but I find that they shocking. don't go very far. I find that shocking. You do? <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> yes, versus ex uh, an explosion. Speaking right? if I can hitchhike on that, yeah. uh, Tesla has developed a new battery, and they are leaving the patents open so other car manufacturers can use it. Really? And the concept behind well, that's that... That's huge. Is so they can develop more charging stations, uh -huh. and also the, the man, other manufacturers will build more electrical cars and buy their batteries. Okay. So it's a, it's a good concept. But the Tesla, of course, was the one that has the high-performance sports car. Right. They just came out with right. a sedan. Right. Uh, that, and it, the sedan has a lot of performance to it. I mean, it's... And they're very efficient, but it's high end again. Yeah. But they're getting the battery technology out to further this. Well, there this was movement. just one a car in <coughs> Germany that can go 247 miles an hour. That's all electric. I just saw that sharp looking car, 1.7 million dollars to buy it, I think. But well, the I Tesla, know. the sports car, is 100 and a quarter, I think. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of money. But, but this one know. was 1.7 and can go higher. Very, very, very fast. Uh, I just want to update on a couple more things here. Uh, so let's solo me here, Nathan. Uh, the uh, now for, Oh, parentalrights.org. This is important here. Now that the Republicans have the House and the Senate, they still don't have a majority, but there will be a push to get the parentalrights.org constitutional amendment passed uh, in the House and the Senate this year. There will be hearings for the first time in years in the Senate. The House has already had a number of hearings in the last couple years. Very fascinating to, to watch in the judicial committees. But go to parentalrights.org website and you can read about the constitutional amendment that you get to raise your children in the upbringing and education of your choice uh, and that the state can't take that away from you without a due, process. due process, legitimate reasons like you're criminal, <coughs> you know, you're choking your kid at night, you know, very, very real issues. You're, you're endangering your child. Uh, and the state has to set out those standards as to what they are. They can't just arbitrarily say, oh, you're not a good parent because uh, 
Uh, you you teach your kids the Bible, which is happening, has happened, happened to me, or uh, you you um, you let them smoke marijuana, or you know it's got to be laid out in laws to what it is. And right now, the state can go in and just do well. Well, the money. ironic thing is, the other end of the continuum, they're not doing things. And there was a young boy that was. Uh, was physically abused by the stepmother and there were nine reports they did nothing until the little boy was yeah. deceased and so I think Governor Dayton has talked about that and there's a number of other things calling for changes on a state level when child abuse is reported I mean not just right. you know fictitious but I'm talking serious when they document it from a hospital says well this boy has broken bones and collarbone and whatever that they that rather than what what they had been doing is sending them to kind of a counseling situation where the abused kid is sitting with both parents. Mm -hmm. Well, that certainly isn't yeah. helping the situation, but I won't go yeah. off on a tangent on that. They're, they, they're going to have to get rid of that and, and start treating the process. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we got a couple of new, um, well, Tom Emmer, he's new to the U.S. House of Representatives. He needs to be called and asked to support this constitutional amendment. Uh, we, they have the authors, the chief authors, already lined up. Uh, the bills haven't been introduced, as this is a new Congress, a new Senate, new House and Senate, uh, but they will be soon. And, but that doesn't mean you can't call your senators, U.S. senators and U.S. congressmen, House of Representatives, and say, hey, please sign on to this bill when it's inter introduced. And Tom Emmer's a guy that should sign on to that bill. Uh, Eric Paulson has signed on in the past. I don't know that Klein has, uh, but he should be. Uh, all these other uh, representatives, the Democrat side, should be signing on too. They keep coming up with excuses saying it's good enough, but with this impact that is coming through the United Nations to sign the conventions on the right of the child, the right of that convention takes away the right of the parent and it has, it has the United Nations uh, telling us how to raise our kids rather than us telling us how to raise our kids, which that's just you know, anathema to the concept of the U.S. Constitution. But there are those people out there significantly in the Democratic Party, and they're there in the Republican Party, that want to have the United Nations rule the world. And you got to watch out for them, and I'll point them out to you here in Minnesota when they come. And Amy Klobuchar is one of those. And uh, she gets it, she's smart, and she's deceptive in how she answers her questions. But parentalrights.org, the constitutional amendment, look it up, find out what's going on. A lot of good video there. Or you can go to uh, my website here, uh, youtube.com, speechlessmn, put in parentalrights.org uh, in, in the search, uh, parental rights, and you should see some videos of past shows that I've done on that subject matter. Uh, also, if you've got questions or comments on the show, feel free to call in. And also, um, there's an email there if you want to email me with show topic ideas or have questions that you want to ask off the air, please do that. Eventually, I look at them. Uh, most often, I don't because I forget. I'm sorry. That's just the way I am. It's pretty bad. Uh, but I still like your input and appreciate you watching the show. And always am glad to meet people out in the public when you are watching the show. And I know you have your own show, Lauren. You, you like that, too. And, and uh, you know, like to hear the good, the bad, yep. and, the, and the indifferent. So, okay. Um, let's get on to what's going on in Grant. Because this is... Uh, this is a pretty significant event that took place. Not only uh, you and Larry Lanou getting elected, this was a real big uh, affront. This was a real big statement, a huge statement about how the city of Grant was being run in the past. That's right, because they've, they've done a number of things. We're supposed to have a planning commission. They eliminated the planning commission. Uh, one of the issues where they were putting building a school on a Superfund site, and of course, as you know, I had uh, lobby down at the right. Capitol for over two years to get the bill through and it was finally defeated by Chuck Weger because he said told uh, uh, who was that Hispanic lady uh, 
Taurus Ray. Taurus Ray had signed on. She was one of the chief sponsors. And he told her, well, if you want your five or six uh, uh, bills to get funded, this bill isn't going to get through your education policy or your six bills won't get through my education finance. So he basically killed the bill. Uh, and I was the chair of the planning commission when they brought this through. It was a former Superfund site, but it went through the VIC program, so they, they pulled it off the list of Superfunds. And uh, they were supposed to have well and septic, and they put in sewer and water. Uh, the mayor, and this was the start of the head of things, uh -huh. where the mayor called a special session. He had three people sign off. And then he, at 7 o'clock at night, he went to the uh, Matamidi City Council. And he, he signed a joint powers agreement, which he didn't necessarily have the authority. And that's what the problem is out there. It's a power grab. And then they put sewer and water in. And now there's mercury in Lost Lake. And it was because the transformers prior to 72 that XL Energy, before it was XL Energy when right. it was NSP, right. dumped in there. They dumped the oil. Okay, and the oil had PCBs, TCE, and mercury. And... Uh, it's now in Lost Lake. It's in some of the wells. They're refusing to do that. Landmark Development is doing the testing up until this last year. They had no, they were supposed to be testing spring and fall. And the, the, this is the second or third year, and they finally have come up with a test, but it's selective testing. When I was on the planning commission, they would not include, and a, a spec book is two to three inches thick. Mm -hmm. It's very complex. Right. We asked, it was asked specifically, why didn't you include these tests from these three wells in the spec book and the engineer got up ball faced lied from Johnson Controls. Oh, we didn't want to clutter the spec book. One more or two more pages. And and the pages that give bad evidence. Oh that and they were the three wells that were within three hundred feet of the school. School, right. And when they built the school they put a, a of uh, plastic fiber underneath a mat, and they have an HVAC system. Well, that's wonderful for the school, but when the kids go out in the playground, and of course we've seen the experience with TCE down at General Mills right by Hennepin Avenue, it mm -hmm. travels a, a, a mile and a half underground. So there were some issues. That's one issue example. He pushed it through. Now then, after this was pushed through, uh, and the, me and the several of the planning commissioners brought up a couple number of topics, like we developed a procedure for handling complaints so it was standardized. Uh -huh. First, a person in the office would make a phone call to the person to, to, see, to, to kind of figure out what the problem was before you sent a letter from an attorney. Mm -hmm. And there'll be an example of this tonight where it didn't yeah, happen, yeah. and we'll explain that, okay? Right, yeah. Uh, and so then what they did, they brought us, three of us, up on charges. One of the things I did as a planning commissioner is we wanted job descriptions, like an O&E man, operations, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Uh, and so we went and went down to the League of Minnesota Cities as long as we were down at the Capitol, and we said, well, we want to know some small cities. What type of job descriptions do they have for a city clerk or a city administrator in a small city? Right. Because we didn't have a job description. And so then one of the things the mayor did is brought us all up in charges, and the charge that he charged me with was impersonating a planning commissioner when I was one. <laughs> of course, I had an attorney great. represent <laughs> me, and basically the attorney, he was so flustered, they just dropped the whole thing, and his next response was to get rid of the planning commission because they weren't giving him the answers that he wanted. Right. Okay, that's the start of things. There's been many things that have been happening out there. They were coming after, what, this about six years ago, coming after something called grazable acres. Mm -hmm. Of course, in Minnesota, as we all know, there's no such thing as a grazable acre. I defy you. Uh, do you see anybody mowing their lawn this time of the year? Hmm. Probably not. No. Okay. <laughs> but it is an animal density right. or a horse manure situation. How right. much? The University of Texas says it takes eight-tenths of an acre to handle the manure from one horse. Hmm. Now, our standard was two acres per horse. Okay. So that's two and a half times the standard right. that a horse manure could be, you know, it Spread breaks down. And, okay. breaks down and, and I have a horse farm. Yeah. I have a 43 acre horse farm, so I have some expertise in this area. I could yeah. spread a lot of horse manure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. we've but, been told. Yes, but <laughs> what I'm Tom saying. Tom told me, the mayor of Grant. <laughs> but so what had happened is the mayor said, well, we want to redo uh, grazable acres. And the, one of the things he came to come up with was counting horses. Yeah. Well, that's kind of violating your rights. Why do you need someone to count, come in your horse and count your animals? If, if you've got 10 acres, you can have four, four to five horses, usually four horses, because you have to take an acre out for the building site. Right. And so then, then he started saying, well, you can't count things 
like uh, trees, because we all know grass doesn't go under trees. Well, it isn't about the grazing. It's about the animal density and the manure management. And he was not talking about that at all, but he was trying to well, push something through because he was currently going after another horse, horse owner. And if you have a stable that's commercial, you get something called a CUP or a conditional use, use permit. permit. Okay. okay. And then there's different standards. And if you have 25 animals, you have to file a, a manure management plan with the state of Minnesota. Okay. That's state law. Well, there was a woman there that had, had a co-op to begin with, and then she wanted to switch, and she wanted to have 54 horses instead of 50. Mm -hmm. And they took her to court and were going to appeal it. They made her spend $60,000 before they finally got nipped wow. in the bud. Again, selectively prosecuting people. Uh, but but here, here's the deal is that in all these things, and this is the summary of how he operates, is that he is not open to conversation. He's not open to anybody asking questions. He's not open to the input of anyway. other ideas or other solutions that may be better or better addressed. So he's not concerned about people the, from, from what I can see. And but he's just concerned about it's my idea. I'm pushing it through. Oh, and he, he doesn't think far down the line. He doesn't have the other yeah. thing is that I ran on was transparency in government and equity, and that's mm -hmm. a very important issue. And it's, in the last year, something has happened where two people out there wanted to s split their lands off, you know, change it, right. and, and because the, the putting giving more to the sun, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And so the first and, one and inheritance and and dividing their property so and it's, it's one of the one, kids can have more. And, yeah. and, and the bottom line is it's, you have to maintain an average of one house per 10 acres. Mm -hmm. Now the first one had 40 acres and a couple, or th 20 or 30 and a couple houses on it, but the son wanted to keep the indoor arena and sell off the father's house because he had passed on. Okay. Now that was l listed in a, in a diner realty and one of the two council persons worked for that office. Okay. Now they got by with two hundred dollars. Oh. Now the chair of the planning commission had the had forty and had two sons that each had ten, and one son decided to sell, but he had a very nice house, and mm -hmm. the people couldn't afford it, so they negotiated a deal. Well, I will sell you the house in five and sell the other five to my brother that's next okay. door. But gee, they made them jump through hoops, and it was somewhere between right. three and five thousand. Okay. So again, that's not equity. Yeah. I mean, who you are should not govern the process right. by which Special you have to favors and, and you know, and that's and that's what got you guys to run, and then that's what got you elected, because. I mean, you guys did a substantial amount of educating the public as to what was going on, and they got to see what was going on through your show and various other means. We got a phone call here, so let's let's take that phone call. Caller, do you have a comment or question? Oh, sound like they uh, went went by. Well, here's what I want to get into here. Then uh, it sounds like they're maybe calling back now. But what I want to get into yeah, here. It's just the way Tom Carr runs the meeting because this shows why the lack of transparency and why uh, there's this inequity oh. that takes place. All right, we got the phone caller here. So, caller, do you have a comment or question? Or yeah, I've got a comment for you, and I know you put on a good show over here. And uh, what I'd like to do is have you kind of keep task and show some examples through your tapes. I know uh, we have a tendency to kind of sidetrack, but you have a lot of good issues and a lot of examples tonight through tape. If mm -hmm. you kind of keep yep. going in some of the Roberts rules and some of the deal over there, and some of these side issues aren't quite as important. You know, to get that message out to the citizens. Of well, we're going to be discuss We're going to be covering yeah, that caller. That's the next up thing right coming now. up. <laughs> that's so a way, to, way to keep us on task. I appreciate that. That's uh, so. Actually, so we're going to start here with the the first uh, video clip, and what you have here is visitors' presentation. And what I did, I did editing on this to take out the visitors' presentation. But I wanted to show you, sh I want you people to see what's going on. Is this really citizens' presentations, visitors' presentation? Um, Could I add something I to that? Yeah, go ahead. Well, what it used to be part of the regular tape, okay? 
uh, where you had public comment. And the concept is, with public comment, you come up at the first 10 minutes of the meeting, and you can say, well, there's a pothole down at the end of 110th, and it wrecked my fr my, the front wheel of my car, so citizens should be aware of that. Or there's a, a, a wild pack of wild dogs running around the neighborhood killing right. chickens. And so the concept is that you can come up and make the council aware of oh, any yeah. issues that they may not be aware of in other citizens. Now, Tom Carr... And, and also because the city council may be hiding those issues and they need to make it public and so that the city council can't say, well, we didn't know, nobody told us. And there it is on the record, you were told. And what he had done was, first of all, he totally canceled public comment. Then he now has public comment, but it is not taped. So anybody, if I, I will normally tape public comment uh -huh. so people can, so we can put it on the all around yeah. grant or the, the show. It used to be briefing, but now it's a local news live. Right. We have that at five o'clock. So people can see what's going. And that's what basically helped build my base. They could say, aha, that's what happened. But now he's gone one better. He's stacking the visitor presentation because he yeah. will not call in anybody. He stacks his thing with cronies. Well, this is what I want people to watch in this that we're going to show real soon is that uh, there's only four people that get to speak, and he's going to have people raise hands. What I didn't do is film the audience when this was happening because there was probably about 10 people, I would say, that were raising their hands saying, I want to speak, and he'd go, okay, you get to speak. And What's really interesting, they're all his neighbors and they're all his friends. So this isn't a visitor's presentation. This is a, uh, I allow, Tom, Tom, I, Tom Carr, Mayor of Grant, get to tell who gets to do visitor's presentation. Well, the other thing, the, the first one up, I think, was Bob Tufty. Now, the significance of that is they had that petition to get rid of the charter before right. it was even there. Now, he went out and got the signatures. And it wasn't in the proper form that the attorney... You're trying to, you're trying to get a city charter going for the city of Grant, so there's some They're checks and to balances defeat it. in yep. there. And the mayor's trying to defeat it, although he he's the one that went to the court to appeal it. Uh, because our, he was trying to hijack it. He was trying he to went stack to it with he, his he people. He went to court to, to get the charter commission going, and now he's trying to kill it. And Which you can do. Uh, and it's his right to do that, but understand his motives is to kill it from the well, beginning. Well, the, the interesting thing was the first petition didn't come in correct. It was in right. an incorrect right. form. So he had a special session just to get the corrected yeah. petition. And so that shows his support in his diabolical, disingenuous right. methods. Right. So, Well, so let's run the uh, video here. And at the end, Tom Carr says, I have somebody that I've asked to come speak. He could have put him on the agenda, but he asked the sheriff to come speak, and that's a visitor's presentation. This guy is, our Mayor Carr is this outrageous. That is not a visitor's presentation. It should have been on the agenda. Okay, control room, let's uh, play the video. Uh, call to order the City of Grant Council meeting for January 6, 2015. Uh, the first thing is our public input. Um, after the last meeting, I just want to remind everybody there's no charging the microphone. Joyce. Um, there's four people that speak, and then that's it. And I will call on you, or you cannot come up to the microphone. And then you have three minutes. So, uh, Lance, Bob in the back, for Gary, the one or two. Here's that, Bob. Gary, you have your hand up. <laughs> Gus, did you have your hand up back there? Come on up. Um, I've been asked to put for the fourth um, person tonight. We have a new sheriff, so I'm not sure who our new sheriff is. If you'd like to come up and speak at this time. And... Okay, so that's our four. Thank you very much. Uh, we're moving on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies and gentlemen, second that one, Tommy. I mean, there you saw it. This is outrageous. I, there is no way that, uh, and, and Nathan, can we have the camera switched here? Um, there is no way, all right, there is there's no way that um, this is visitor's presentation. This is Tom Carr's special guest presentation. And he couldn't, he didn't have enough people 
to cover the four slots. This is probably an open meeting law violation. Do you, do you know for sure? No, but the interesting thing is that, you know, there were four, about 48 people in that room. Yeah, it was packed. Three supporters for Tom Carr and his cronies, 45 for me. And, and just to, 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 to illustrate this, at the end when I added about the All Around uh -huh. Grant Show and that showed the, the, the award that I won, did you hear the, the continued applause that I got? A absolutely. And so, so people are aware of me. I've went around talking a lot about transparency and government and equity. And there's a lot of things that have happened that have been unfair from the planning commission. Uh, we had a, right. a, the wedding barn went in. Okay. But, but here, here's the deal on this is that he is a <coughs> control freak to the mm -hmm. extent that he doesn't care what anybody else, he, he doesn't want input from anybody else. I mean, there's something, seriously, there's, I, there's something mentally wrong with this guy, in my opinion. I, I don't have a problem I saying that. I wouldn't disagree. I, I mean, this is, this is serious stuff. This is, this is psychotic behavior, and it's uh, unbelievable. But um, the next thing I want to show be, uh, in this deal, because that, well, well, first of all, this is visitors' presentations need to be changed to make it right you know, inaccurate. And I know you guys are going to try to do that. Uh, and you may be outvoted, but it is so bad and such an embarrassment uh, that I, I think you may get another vote on this. I, I think you can switch somebody over. Not Huber, not Carr, but you may be able to do that because she's going to end up being embarrassed as other city council member, Tina. Well, the What's her last name, Tina? Lobin. Lobin. The problem and, and, is... But I, I'm just saying this. She has. She, she's going to be so embarrassed when the truth comes out. I, I think she will switch. If she doesn't, it's going to be bad. We got to keep moving on. We're running out of time here. Next thing I want to show is uh, the oath of office that you took, and uh, <coughs> um, so let's just play that now. I'm going to talk over it. We're not going to have any sound with this uh, video here, but you're taking the oath of office, and go ahead, play the video. And um, there we're seeing you taking the oath. And one thing I asked you and Larry to do, and we're going to see Larry taking the oath too, was to make sure you sign an oath of office. Because those two things are required by law, by the Constitution, by the statutes. And you did. You took your oath, and then you signed. Signed the paper. Now, but the paper said you were running the, your they oath. Crossed, they said mayor. They crossed mayor out and penciled something in. And I found that very interesting, and I mentioned to Tom Carr in a humorous, oh, well, it looks like I'm the mayor now. And, uh, you know, uh, by the way, the... Uh, and there's comment, Larry Lanou getting it, his oath in. By, by the way, the comment was made from the mayor to a to the, well, former councilman that didn't run that his worst nightmare would for me to get elected, which it may end up being because there's so okay. many things. I, I ran a DECA program yep. in high school. We did a lot of Robert's Rules of Order. Yeah. And this guy is so far off. And there's a, I don't know if you have the segment of the tape in there that says, well, the, the uh, Larry Lanou said, well, do you run by Robert's Rules of Order? Well, sort of, kind of. We kind of just use them for a guideline. Yeah, well, well that's not the way it works. Uh, they're rules, <coughs> and you have to go by them. Uh, which we will show in a little I bit. But the there's the applause. You guys got great applause for your oath. I mean, you, you had a lot a of supporters there. I and think it's the problem is it's confusion on Tom Carr's uh -huh. part. He thinks it's the fiefdom of Carr instead of the city of Grant. Right. Well, and we're going to see this here coming up with the next clip we have on the agenda because the agenda here, uh, there's a specific procedure, but I want you to notice something here. The agenda was never approved, and and in, uh, to be gone through, and so you're going to have to listen to it, but they did what was called a, um, a motion for the agenda. Larry Lanou want the agenda changed, and uh, Mayor Carr called the question, and took. but then you take a vote on the calling of the question. You can't just call the question and then go vote. The vote is on the calling of the question. He never come back and then said, we're going to approve the agenda. So there was no vote on approving the agenda. The agenda was never approved. Okay, so let's watch the video. And we'll get your, get your comments here. This is important to understand. The regular agenda. 
Um, move to I, approve regular agenda. I, I move. Okay, I got a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Got a second from Tina. Any further discussion? Yes. What? Go ahead. All right. Uh, now we have further discussion. I'd like to add some to the make amend the motion to put on the charter commission and the planning commission onto the uh, regular agenda. I know you have a motion. I ask to have it amended. I know. Uh, your quick jumping in is to stack the deck right here, and just as the public comment was stacked, the four Mr. L Mr. Lanier, you address the issue at the table. I'm and stop making in. comments. So, I Jeff, do you want to? No, I won't allow you to amend my motion. Thank you. See now. See. Okay. That? Okay. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any no? No. No. Two no. Okay. That was that was it. That was it. He called the question. There was a vote on the calling of the question. They did not go then and have a vote to approve the agenda. Okay. Remember, this is the Fife de Macar, not this right. uh, the right. Dem Democratic City of Grant. Well, and, and here, here's the thing. You, I mean, you and Larry need to use point of order. You got to use that. That stops the discussion. <coughs> There's no debate. You raise what the point of order is. We have no agenda. That's true. You're not allowing discussion on this. Um, and. Uh, so that point of order needs to be used a lot more. Uh, but what was really funny, this, this uh, Jeff Huber, City mm -hmm. Council Member Huber, mm -hmm. he goes, I won't allow you to amend. He can't do that. He has no say in that. Larry put out a legitimate motion about what he wanted to have added to the agenda. Carr has no say. That motion needs to be seconded, and I believe it was. I, I, yeah, I, I seconded I, you that. You seconded that. And but what Larry shouldn't have done is started discussing it. Once the second came in, the chair should have recognized uh, uh, Larry Lanou and then have him put a dis why he wanted uh, those things on the agenda. And and but Mayor Carr wasn't going to let him have the discussion, and Larry rightly went to it but then mayor carr says well we got a motion on the table well you got another motion to amend the motion and that's legitimate that takes precedence right and so <laughs> there's all kinds of things that went wrong here well what they were doing was giving the bums rush to get through to get the things that because what they didn't want to do is they wanted to keep things on the consent agenda that weren't supposed to be there. Well, we're not even there at the consent agenda yet. This oh, is I just know. the this agenda. This is just getting going. We haven't got the agenda approved yet. Right. So we went And it the was whole... never approved. It was never approved. <coughs> and, and that's, which could have some legal implications. Um, not so much since you guys actually went through an agenda and you followed one and stuff like that. But, um um, I, I don't know what all those legal ramifications was, but this was this was bad. Uh, Mayor Carr's handling of it, I don't think you guys did a great job of handling it either. I agree with you. But you did as good as you can do under the circumstances. It didn't matter what you could. Would If you did everything right, it would have been wrong. You know, and just by Jeff Huber saying, I, I'm not allowing you to amend my motion, which is a ridiculous statement, and then Mayor Carr running with that. You can't, we, we got a motion in a second, so you can't, you can't amend. Baloney. That is totally, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, now let's go to, uh, well, let's uh, show the next, oh, Nathan, I want you to show 152 agenda. And there's no sound on that, I believe. No I sound. And, and this is just the agenda so that you see it. Um, and just go ahead and play that anytime. We'll talk over that. There's the agenda, uh, part of the agenda going there. Uh, it looks like we started at the second page, not at the beginning of the video. I may have messed up when I put that. I was looking at it, and I don't think I put it back to the beginning. There's well, the there's first page. There's the four. Oath of Office, approval of regular agenda, approval of consent agenda. There's the bills. The thing down there, though, is the appointment list, which is F. Yeah, and we'll get into we'll what get was into that on that consent later. agenda. Uh, but, you know, there, there's an agenda, but it was never approved in, in the whole thing. So that's, that's good enough, uh, Nathan, on that video. Um, the next video we're going to have is the discussion on the consent agenda. Yeah, this is just like the agenda discussion, pretty much the consent agenda went the same way. 
the whole idea behind a consent agenda is that these are things that are typically all the parties would agree on. They're routine. They're routine. They're like pay, payment of, of bills, bills that for are road grading and black right. topping in janitorial services. Yeah, and then at any time, you can pull because them. it's a consent agenda, if a city council member doesn't agree with them or wants a discussion, you pull off an issue. There's no second required because automatically it's not consented to. That's right. I, I mean, and I talked to your city attorney, Nick Vivian, and he goes, well, different cities did do it differently. And I said, but you can't not, if somebody objects to it, and, and wants to pull something for a discussion, they're an elected representative, and you're taking away their right of the people they represent to talk. Well, let me add something to that. He has given the opinion, whatever Tom Carr wants. They would not let him put the scholarships on our website. Ten miles up the road, he's the same attorney for Scandia, right. and they have it. So he gives Tom Carr whatever... Uh, advice he wants, okay, well, like not allowing the the the, the uh, charter commission to meet in the town hall or funding in the fifteen hundred dollars, which is mandated by the statute. Yeah. You know, but but honestly, I don't think Nick Vivian knew. I if he if he was doing this, I don't care thing, and he was just getting that. I'm going to do whatever Tom Carr says. Then um, he really looks bad as an attorney. And, and the main funny thing here is Maplewood is looking at Eckbert, Eckbert and Lammers as being attorneys for their city, and it would be Nick Vivian, I believe, oh, it would good, be the... Good luck. We have a phone call, then, though, Yeah, I, I, know, I know we do. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. But uh, that's outrageous because Maplewood has the consent agenda right in how they do that. And now he's going to... How, how is he going to deal with Maplewood and the city of Grant and deal with them differently? I don't know. But let's watch. Oh, let's take the phone call here real quick. Caller, are you with us? Question or comment? Yes. I've got a qu question or a comment back on Mr. Huber's uh, statement about his, the amendment. Yeah. It seems potentially possibly a little worse that he can't even dis distinguish the difference between a friendly amendment and a regular amendment. Well, because he was acting like it was a friendly amendment when it wasn't. Right. Well, there is no such thing as a friendly amendment. It's just an amendment. There's only amendments, friendly or not friendly. It doesn't matter. And that's a confusing part that people, it gets brought up a lot. This is a friendly amendment. No such thing. It's an amendment. You're amending it or not. It doesn't matter what the first, first person, the, the person who makes the initial amendment can say, I don't like it. And they can say, I like it. Uh, and may agree to it, that's just sending a message to the people that are supporting or not supporting as to where they stand with that amendment. So it, it's not up to, that may determine who votes which way, but it doesn't determine whether the motion gets made or whether the amendment is approved or not. Do, do you understand that difference, caller? Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, and, and that uh, took me a while to learn that one <laughs> because, uh, you know, I got, finally got around some people that knew this stuff, and they just explained it uh, well. But, well, you so. could go to the Tom Carr Thank School you. of... No, I didn't. <laughs> Anything else, caller? Well, that was, that was a great question and a, a very uh, important one to understand. No such thing as friendly amendment, so... Um, Okay, let's look at the uh, consent agenda discussion here, the video. See the... Move the consent agenda. So moved. One second. Uh, I make a motion to uh, strike some things from the consent agenda. I second that. All right. There's, there's, there's already a vote, a motion on the floor. Jeff already made it, so we can't call your time. Um, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Any uh, votes? Wait a minute. No, I call the motion. No, the motion. No. Are you saying the motion? You, you can't. Mr. There's sure can. Already, Robert's there, rules there was already a motion. Okay. Jeff made the motion. Tina seconded it. Full I called the, the, I called the question, and the answer was yes. Okay. It passed, so. I, no, the question isn't passed. Yeah, right. it is passed. Mayor, Mr. 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 Lanou, you Mr. can either Mr. control Mr. yourself <laughs> or you will be censured. All right, so we have the consent agenda. This consent agenda. Object to the consideration. Right, if you do not be quiet, 
Objective Senate. considerations, Joe. No. Tom, yes, I can no. do that. That's no. Robert's rules and order. We're not rejecting the consideration. We passed the motion. We're moving on. Okay, next on our agenda, year end. Let's see, which one is that? Going on to. No. I just. I just. It, so much happened that was so bad there is uh, unbelievable. Uh, so the object to the consideration is what, fact, what is that about? Yeah, you you can make a motion. You can object in saying that you do not want it considered. It's kind of like tabling, but slightly different. I had that on my. I have a cheat sheet by right. the way with yeah. with the different. There's like twenty six or twenty eight different motions that are available. Some that you can interrupt. Some you can't interrupt. Right. The, the object to the consideration, you can, in fact, interrupt. Same with that. Same with uh, 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 point of orders. You yep, can interrupt, of. and everything shuts down. And then you get to make your, your uh, objection to what's taking place. He did not do that. He doesn't follow Robert's rules of orders. No. He is, you know, it's a fife to Makar, and right. he makes up his little rules, and... Well, the other thing that was happened is there was a motion to pull things off a consent agenda. So just because you have a motion in the second doesn't mean things can't be amended. Okay, and when there's a motion to pull things off, first of all, you don't need a second for a consent agenda. That's just bogus. And they haven't put, does, does the city of Grant have rules? Well, the, reason, running the reason there was a second is because last month, Steve Bonin, with his last meeting, he wanted to pull something off the consent agenda, and Carr said, no, we changed the rules, you have to have a second. But when were the rules changed? Well, I cannot find it in the minutes, I can't find it anywhere. Again, this guy is a wild card, he thinks he's a gunslinger down at the OK Corral and can do what he wants. He, and he is not truthful, he's disingenuous, yeah. he's shifty, uh, he but bends what, the rules what I wanted, to fit. But the real thing we need to get to here now is to what was on that consent agenda that needed to be discussed. And we got a little time, so we're going to take about 30 seconds with each one. Why they needed to be discussed so that the people would know what was going on. Well, one of the things they did is they changed the, the legal paper from the White uh -huh. Bear Press and the Lowdown, which everyone gets, to the St. Paul paper. The problem with having it in the St. Paul paper, you never know which day it's going to be or where it's going to be. There's no standardized place. Most people could, he already has went to the point where he just will not per, even permit print a summary of any ordinance changes. If you want to see an ordinance change and what he's changing, you have to go to the clerk. So what again, what he's doing is he's limiting oh. transparency in but, government. But that's wrong because you have to publish it in the newspaper if you have an ordinance change before it becomes effective. You, you have to do that. Well, they, they, he does it his own way. He well, said there's a publishing, we're publishing 2014-37, the the details if you're interested in the details look and go to the clerk's office and she will share it with you okay so i mean this is changing the publisher of the newspaper is a big deal there should be a discussion should be on a that. discussion and there are a number of other things so he just doesn't want people to know what's going on and here's the thing here's the thing on this consent agenda you know what because he didn't allow for things to be pulled i don't think any of these consent agenda items are legitimate I, I think if I was the Pioneer Press, I would go and say, you know what, you didn't pass this correctly. And so we can't take this contract because it may be taken away from us. You I've know, already got a call into Elizabeth Moore. So. And who's Elizabeth Moore? She's one of the reporters. But one of the problems I've found... For the White Bear Press? No, no, for the St. Paul Pioneer well, Press. Well, the White Bear Press needs to be notified, They too. already have. Okay. And I discussed it with them at length, Carter Johnson's... Uh, I know him, he's a former student of mine. He uh -huh. went to White Bear High School, so was, did his sister. And we discussed this at length. <coughs> and the thing is, a lot of these things should have been discussed. For example, the volunteer list, uh, who's, the, they have changed uh, the newsletter editor. We had two or three people want, want to volunteer to do that. There's basically no citizen participation. They're eliminating all citizen participation. They're not allowed to so participate. So you have, you have a list of 30 people, 30 spots for people to volunteer, and you had no input or, or this say is a, on that. Th this is a picture of it, folks. Yeah. Even the ball field. They, Joyce Wielander, the, the ball field was named after her son that was deceased. They cleared it and they maintained it with the 4-H'ers. There's a big rock out there with a plaque on it that says the Wielander field. For spite, Mayor Carr 
took the scheduling of the ball field away from Joyce Wielander. He also tried to tell her she wasn't a fire marshal anymore, but the DNR is in charge okay. of that and Tom Carr can't. So what we're seeing a lot of is usurping of power. And uh, yeah. so this, this is the important thing. And okay. I guess we have a something Yeah, else. we got a caller here. So caller, do you have a comment or question? Well, I think, I think that I'd rather have uh, Tom Carr referred to as Kim uh, Young Sung <laughs> and that the city of Grant should be known as East uh, Korea because the way that he runs it out here is kind of like that little guy, you know, with his shaved off stuff on his side of his head. Car is uh, the world's worst. I hate to even be in a in a any type of a contractual situation looking at homes with that guy. I wouldn't trust Caldwell Banker, uh, particularly Tom uh, Kim, or I should say Kim, for uh, uh, buying a home, let alone Jeff Huber. So yeah, that's that's okay. where I'm at. I just uh, those guys are crazier than heck out there. Yeah, it, thank uh, you. I, I if you if you want to draw, and I I don't know them well. I just see them by what's going on in the city council meeting. But if you want to, if that's how they're running their business and dealing with people in the field, that's bad news. Well, I'm aware of one instance with Tom Carr did not present a cash offer to a seller, uh -huh. and. Uh, the other realtor brought up brought up that this was unethical, but it never went anywhere. But look, can we get to that next clip? Okay, uh, we'll get that in a second here. Uh, there's one other thing on the consent agenda. Uh, the video technician pay increase from twenty to twenty one dollars. Well, that's way under market rates. I mean, and I and I know that one of the city council members wanted to go to twenty five bucks an hour. And that's still uh -huh. way under, but that's a decent price. Plus, the cable commission here pays for that. It's unbelievable. It, it doesn't cost the city a grand a dime. And you couldn't have a discussion on you it. You can have four meetings a month, and they refuse to allow a video technician to tape the uh, charter commission meetings. And I have to volunteer to do that. In, in Montemita and the, the equipment, sometimes we have problems with it. Yeah. But anyway. All right. It. Well, let's uh, show the next uh, clip here, uh, CUP for signs. Yeah. A couple questions I'd like to address, Nick, if I could, real quick ones. Uh, as long as they don't involve anything that's active or anybody no, that's not, not here. No, okay. no, no, absolutely. Uh, are you familiar with 211B045 that says 46 before days before the primary until 10 days after the general election, campaign signs of any shape or size are elected, uh, are allowed? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. The other thing I want to point out is I received a letter that said uh, I needed a conditional use permit, and the question I have for you is who authorized you to s send this letter that I have to have a conditional use permit for the three signs that are on my hay wagons in Joyce Wielander's field. I found that rather interesting. And I was just curious, the process, who directed you to send the, the letter out that I have saying that I need a conditional use permit? Tina, you have your hand up. You have a question? I believe the rules are you can't have a display, right? Is that right? Correct. It's the, not the signs. It's not the size of the signs or how many signs. It's a display. Because I know when I was campaigning, I asked if you could put even like those little solar lights that you stick in the ground or whatever so that you can see them at night and oh my goodness that was a no 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 you can't do that so it's not well this is on it's a not the yeah. it yeah. doesn't so matter it's a display yeah. so, so, so I, as I, I couldn't do it you can't do it nobody can do it so so as i indicated earlier the city operates on a complaint based system if we got a complaint kim communicated it to, to me we we looked at it do we over the years, over the last several years, we've had a number of, of issues with campaign signs to the extent that we were involved, the city was involved in litigation over the campaign signs. Um, and so I'm, I'm familiar with, with that ordinance of the or, or the statute, and the statute says that you can't regulate size and you can't regulate number. Mm -hmm. You have as many signs out on a property as, as you want. But the city does have an ordinance that indicates that you can't have displays. And we take that, that ordinance or that that ordinance seriously uh, we've got to have a, a way to, to regulate signs and we you know we're, we're restricted based on uh, what that that statute says and and so uh, it's, well, it's the application of the ordinance and and my understanding is that all the signs have, have been taken care of and there are no issues but 
what I'm saying is a hay wagon and three signs are not a display. If there were lights or there was a caricature or something else, that is really, really stretching the definition because I think you'll find in Grant there has to be at least two or three hundred hay wagons. I've got six of them out in my pasture right now and they're not a display. And so what I'm saying is I certainly understand if you have flashing lights or, for example, we had a semi that was parked illegally a while ago. Oh, well, you had, sign. there was yep. flags and there was other signs, too, you, about the Charter Commission. And okay. Yeah. And the other thing is I know I don't think it's against the law to, to have an American flag. So. The, the, this was outrageous. Their, their reasoning here is, is really depraved uh, because the thing is it's your campaign sign. It's not a display. And, but you know what? It is a display. Too bad. It's your campaign sign. Well, if uh, the the problem was that the road was the road is about six feet higher than the pasture, so there's no way I could get the sign up high enough so people could see it. So it was put to the side very tastefully. Three signs. It's irrelevant. Uh, uh, it's a it's a campaign sign, and you can get it to where you need it to be. I, I mean, and they want to call it a display, and therefore. Yeah, campaign signs are displays. I, I mean, if they did, you have to take them down. I didn't. No, I just got, okay. got a letter, and everyone else. And then had what a, happened? The the, the did lady they do anything? No, the the lady. It was just harassment again, which they frequently do. Uh, like they were saying about the the the, the uh, sure. one place we had a American flag flying. Okay. Well, that's not against the law. They, right. But they sent a, a, a seventy eight well, year old lady a nasty letter saying that she needed a yeah. CUP and they were coming after her, which right. I find very upsetting. And that's that same little well, old lady that's here, a Here's the deal the city. is that when Tina Loban, city council member Loban, said I had to take mine down, the only reason she had to take them down because she didn't know the law. Well, she didn't even have lights. She never even but put them it's, up. But it's, 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 she just didn't know the law. And so that's too bad. Well, anyway, we're, we're out of time. We're wrapping up here. Uh, remember, people, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? That's why I support Lauren and Larry, because they're standing up for your liberties, for your speech rights. Mayor Carr is not, in my opinion. And also, good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great week. Sets on fire